you know if you've ever heard somebody say our gospel is a feel-good gospel that's actually the opposite <clears throat> or you know everybody's heard the term uh, greasy grace all that <laughs> they're just inevitably making fun of Christ's sacrifice calling it greasy grace and whatever whatnot you know or uh, feel good gospel and they try to use scripture out of context oh we uh, gather together preachers to preach messages to, you know <clears throat> feel good messages have itching ears turn their backs on the truth all those legalists say that's about us free gracers and it's complete opposite actually it's not about free gracers which free gracers have the true gospel it's actually about the religious in their message scratches the itchy ears because a human wants to hear I can do it a human wants to hear pull yourself up by your own bootstraps you can do it all you have to do is be good and one follow these 12 steps and uh, <coughs> feed the homeless the golden rule all of that that's the feel-good gospel that is for the itching ears okay that's what those scriptures are about they're not about Christ alone faith alone and Christ alone what's faith alone and Christ alone the narrow path and they say that the narrow path is oh it's so narrow and so hard to be found because you have to be uh, you have to keep the law you, you have to be good and that's why I know hardly people find it because not hardly any people can uh, be good enough to get to heaven. See how perverted that thought is, that thought process is? That's the way the legalist thinks about the narrow path. And few be there that find it. They think that's what Jesus means by it. It's so hard to find and because Christianity is so hard. Because you got to be... Uh, you got to be good, and you got to do this, and you got to do that, and to get there, to get to heaven, you know, or die and find out. What? That's miserable. Die and find out. <clears throat> so that's what they think. That's a bit. It's totally opposite. It's not the narrow path. It's hard to find because every human being is looking to work their way to heaven by behavior modification in, in twelve easy steps. Right? They're gonna. They're going to whip yourself on the back like those crazy Catholics or whatever. That's insane. They're going to bloodletting. They're going to draw blood because they're so sorry for their sins. That's the epitome of pride is what that is. Okay. But yeah, as you can see, there's a pattern here that the legalists follow. is totally taking everything out of context and flipping it backwards on itself. All right. So the narrow path is Jesus Christ alone, faith alone, and Christ alone. And, and very few be that find it. Because like what I just said, everybody is focused on getting there by their own bootstraps. Every religion preaches, be good enough to get there. Except Christianity. Which is not religion, it's reality, it's truth. It's not just some kind of uh, country club thing. Okay. So, everything's backwards, right? Well, we know the enemy does that. Uh... I mean, there's so many. Every scripture a legalist will take out of context. Every scripture. And they won't believe the ones that are clear about eternal security. They just won't believe it. Because they go to another verse to contradict that. So basically what they're saying is that's not true. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life is not true. Because you got to go do this too. So which is it? So they're saying without saying that Jesus is a liar... Okay, and they do that by taking scripture out of context. Um, they just won't believe that it's freely you've been given now, or freely you've received now, freely give. Like what he told the disciples. Freely you've been given this gift of grace. Uh, when are we going to learn that we can't pay for it? When are we going to learn that there's nothing we can do? To pay God back for anything, right? <clears throat> Just like we came into this world in Adam, we were already in Adam. We didn't do nothing to be in Adam. We were already born in Adam, in the flesh. Just like in Christ, we don't do anything to become in Christ, physically. We just believe. And then we get put into Christ, spiritually baptized. 
into Jesus Christ. And then that's an eternal thing people don't understand. They think it's so temporary, you can be lost, saved, saved, lost. Here, there, well, you know, you can be a sheep and a goat at the same time. That is uh, ridiculous. And there's millions and millions of people that believe that. And they are held down, and it's sad that they are controlled by this false, this, this, these lies. Because I used to be one of them. <clears throat> and the more and more you grow in grace and really start to understand throughout the years of your maturity, of understanding true salvation and grace, the more you'll figure out about yourself and realize about yourself. Like I remember, you know, when I was a big time legalist and I would sin, I would make up uh, uh, excuses for my sins, right? <laughs> I'd say, oh, it wasn't that bad, or at least I don't do this, or, well, he's doing that and I've only done this, and, and it's not that, you know, <laughs> that's how you look at yourself, because you're constantly comparing yourself to a standard that you will never reach, which is Jesus Christ. And then you belittle what you do wrong and think God will sweep that under the rug, but Joe Schmo going to the uh, uh, strip club and getting drunk every night, oh, he's definitely, uh, he's going to bust hell wide open, but me, because I just said a cuss word, oh, it's okay, I'm better than that guy. That's their outlook, guys. That's their outlook. <clears throat> they don't understand that one sin sends a person to hell condemns you forever and there's nothing you can do stopping doing it doesn't help stopping doing it won't forgive you only blood there's only forgiveness a remission or a forgiveness of sins through the blood okay god has a blood-based economy blood-based economy here not a stop doing it economy People stopping doing certain sins and never ever has forgiven them. We compare that in this life because, you know, when you're dealing human to human, you know, flesh to flesh here with fallible humans, the way we deal with each other, oh, well, if you really stop doing that to me, I'll really forgive you, right? And then we try to compare that to who God is. We can't compare that. To God has a blood-based way, right? Down here, you're more apt to say, oh, I'll, you know, I'll trust you and blah, 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 and this and that if you stop doing what you're doing to me. But see, that's not how it works with God. You get born again. You partake of Jesus Christ. You quench your thirst for spiritual life. But you'll never have to quench, you know, you'll never thirst again, Jesus says in John 6. Right? And, uh, The simplicity in that is that the blood is what got you there. Okay? The legalist is going to the altar every second, trying to put their cigarettes down on the altar and saying, God, this is what I'll give up to be saved. Totally ignoring Christ's sacrifice. Right? <clears throat> so anyways, guys, I'm going to end this. <laughs> Just wanted to go on that little rant there about uh, how they flip things backwards and the way a person sees the Bible that's a legalist is totally different from the way we see it. All right? Uh, but I'm sure all of you have already went through that and are going through it. And, you know, I stopped mainly arguing with a lot of legalists years ago. Every now and then I'll have a conversation. But it's like beating your head against a brick wall, guys. It's uh, ridiculous. They have to be brought to the end of themselves before they realize they can't do it. And sometimes it takes a hard fall. If you never realize that you're on rock bottom the whole time. And you can't save yourself. You'll always think there's some little redeeming quality of you that you can save yourself by. It's just ridiculous. But we got to realize that uh, once you're saved you are the righteousness of the God of Christ. And... It's as simple as that. <clears throat> and then God's not in love with a, some future version of you. He's in love with who you are right now. All right? Because you are in Him. And uh, He understands all of our struggles. Right? He's seen all of your struggles in the future already, guys. Uh, like I've talked about that a million times. 
So that helps to look at it from that perspective sometimes. Because we only know the present. And we only know, we don't know what's going to happen. But God already knew it. And that's, you know, if you would think of all the sins throughout your life and he still paid for the price for everything, it's unfathomable, you know. That's a tongue twister, right? Well, God bless everybody. Everybody have a great day.